Introduction to Evolution This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on Introduction to Evolution. You are listening to the third part, which contains Section 5, Evidence for Evolution. The third part begins now. Introduction to Evolution from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Section 5. Evidence for Evolution. Scientific evidence for evolution comes from many aspects of biology and includes fossils, homologous structures, and molecular similarities between species DNA. Fossil record. Research in the field of paleontology, the study of fossils, supports the idea that all living organisms are related. Fossils provide evidence that accumulated changes in organisms over long periods of time have led to the diverse forms of life we see today. A fossil itself reveals the organism's structure and the relationships between present and extinct species, allowing paleontologists to construct a family tree for all of the life forms on Earth. Modern paleontology began with the work of Georges Cuvet, 1769 to 1832. Cuvier noted that in sedimentary rock, each layer contained a specific group of fossils. The deeper layers, which he proposed to be older, contained simpler life forms. He noted that the many forms of life from the past are no longer present today. One of Cuvier's successful contributions to the understanding of the fossil record was establishing extinction as a fact. In an attempt to explain extinction, Cuvier proposed the idea of, quote, revolutions, end quote, or catastrophism, in which he speculated that geological catastrophes had occurred throughout the Earth's history, wiping out large numbers of species. Cuvier's theory of revolutions was later replaced by uniform uniformitarian theories, notably those of James Hutton and Charles Lyell, who proposed that the Earth's geological changes were gradual and consistent. However, Current evidence in the fossil record supports the concept of mass extinctions. As a result, the general idea of catastrophism has re-emerged as a valid hypothesis for at least some of the rapid changes in life forms that appear in the fossil records. A very large number of fossils have now been discovered and identified. These fossils serve as a chronological record of evolution. The fossil record provides examples of transitional species that demonstrate ancestral links between past and present life forms. One such transitional fossil is Archaeopteryx, an ancient organism that had the distinct characteristics of a reptile, such as a long bony tail and conical teeth, yet also had characteristics of birds, such as feathers and a wishbone. The implication from such a find is that modern reptiles and birds arose from a common ancestor. Comparative Anatomy 
The composition of similarities between organisms of their form or appearance of parts, called their morphology, has long been a way to classify life into closely related groups. This can be done by comparing the structure of adult organisms in different species, or by comparing the patterns of how cells grow, divide, and even migrate during an organism's development. Taxonomy Taxonomy is the branch of biology that names and classifies all living things. Scientists use morphological and genetic similarities to assist them in categorizing life forms based on ancestral relationships. For example, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans all belong to the same taxonomic grouping referred to as a family. In this case, the family called hominidae. These animals are grouped together because of similarities in morphology that come from common ancestry. This is called homology. Strong evidence for evolution comes from the analysis of homologous structures, structures in different species that no longer perform the same task, but which share a similar structure. Such is the case of the forelimbs of mammals. The forelimbs of a human, cat, whale, and bat all have strikingly similar bone structures. However, each of these four species' forelimbs performs a different task. The same bones that construct a bat's wings, which are used for flight, also construct a whale's flippers, which are used for swimming. Such a, quote, design, end quote, makes little sense if they are unrelated and uniquely constructed for their particular tasks. The theory of evolution explains these homologous structures. All four animals shared a common ancestor, and each has undergone change over many generations. These changes in structure have produced forelimbs adapted for different tasks. However, anatomical comparisons can be misleading, as not all anatomical similarities indicate a close relationship. Organisms that share similar environments will often develop similar physical features, a process known as convergent evolution. Both sharks and dolphins have similar body forms, yet are only distantly related. Sharks are fish and dolphins are mammals. Such similarities are a result of both populations being exposed to the same selective pressures. Within both groups, changes that aid swimming have been favored. Thus, over time, they developed similar appearances, morphology, even though they are not closely related. Embryology. In some cases, Anatomical comparison of structures in the embryos of two or more species provides evidence, provides evidence for a shared ancestor that may not be obvious in the adult forms. As the embryo develops, these homologies can be lost to view and the structures can take on different functions. Part of the basis of classifying the vertebrate group, which includes humans, is the presence of a tail extending beyond the anus and pharyngeal slits. Both structures appear 
during some stage of embryonic development, but are not always obvious in the adult form. Because of the morphological similarities present in embryos of different species during development, it was once assumed that organisms re-enact their evolutionary history as an embryo. It was thought that human embryos passed through an amphibian, then a reptilian stage before completing their development as mammals. Such a reenactment, often called recapitulation theory, is not supported by scientific evidence. What does occur, however, is that the first stages of development are similar in broad groups of organisms. At very early stages, for instance, all vertebrates appear extremely similar, but do not exactly resemble any ancestral species. As development continues, specific features, specific features emerge from this basic pattern. Vestigial structures. Homology includes a unique group of shared structures, referred to as vestigial structures. Vestigial refers to anatomical parts that are of minimal, if any, value to the organism that possesses them. These apparently illogical structures are remnants of organs that played an important role in ancestral forms, such is the case in whales, which have small vestigial bones that appear to be remnants of the leg bones of their ancestors, which walked on land. Humans also have vestigial structures, including the ear muscles, the wisdom teeth, the appendix, the tailbone, body hair, including goosebumps, and the semi-lunar fold in the corner of the eye. Biogeography Biogeography is the study of the geographical distribution of species. Evidence from biogeography, especially from the biogeography of oceanic islands, played a key role in convincing both Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace that species evolved with a branching pattern of common descent. Islands often contain endemic species, species not found anywhere else, but those species are often related to species found on the nearest continent. Furthermore, islands often contain clusters of closely related species that have very different ecological niches, that is, have different ways of making a living in the environment. Such clusters form through a process of adaptive radiation, where a single ancestral species colonizes an island that has a variety of open ecological niches, and then diversifies by evolving into different species adapted to fill those empty niches. Well-studied examples include Darwin's finches, a group of 13 finch species endemic to the Galapagos Islands, and the Hawaiian honeycreepers, a group of birds that once, before extinctions caused by humans, numbered 60 species filling in diverse ecological roles all descended from a single finch-like ancestor that arrived on the Hawaiian Islands some four million years ago. Another example is the Silver Sword Alliance, a group of perennial plant species, also endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, that inhabit a variety of habitats and come in a variety of shapes 
and sizes that include trees, shrubs, and ground-hugging mats, but which can be hybridized with one another and with certain tarweed species found on the west coast of North America. It appears that one of those tarweeds colonized Hawaii in the past and gave rise to the entire Silver Sword Alliance. Molecular Biology Every living organism, with the possible exception of RNA viruses, contain molecules of DNA which carries genetic information. Genes are the pieces of DNA that carry this information, and they influence the properties of an organism. Genes determine an individual's general appearance and, to some extent, their behavior. If two organisms are closely related, their DNA will be very similar. On the other hand, the more distantly related two organisms are, the more differences they will have. For example, brothers are closely related and have very similar DNA, while cousins share a more distant relationship and have far more differences in their DNA. Similarities in DNA are used to determine the relationships between species in much the same manner as they are used to show relationships between individuals. For example, comparing chimpanzees with gorillas and humans shows that there is as much as a 96% similarity between the DNA of humans and chimps. Comparisons of DNA indicate that humans and chimpanzees are more closely related to each other than either species is to gorillas. The field of molecular systematics focuses on measuring the similarities in these molecules and using this information to work out how different types of organisms are related through evolution. These comparisons have allowed biologists to build a relationship tree of the evolution of life on Earth. They have even allowed scientists to unravel the relationships between organisms whose common ancestors lived such a long time ago that no real similarities remain in the appearance of the organisms. Artificial Selection Artificial selection is the controlled breeding of domestic plants and animals. Humans determine which animal or plant will reproduce and which of the offspring will survive. Thus, they determine which genes will be passed on to future generations. The process of artificial selection has had a significant impact on the evolution of domestic animals. For example, people have produced different types of dogs by controlled breeding. The differences in size between the Chihuahua and the Great Dane are the result of artificial selection. Despite their dramatically different physical appearance, they, and all other dogs, evolved from a few wolves domesticated by humans in what is now China, less than 15,000 years ago. Artificial selection has produced a wide variety of plants. In the case of maize, or corn, recent genetic evidence suggests that domestication occurred 10,000 years ago in central Mexico. Prior to domestication, the edible portion of the wild form 
was small and difficult to collect. Today, the Mays Genetics Corporation Stock Center maintains a collection of more than 10,000 genetic variations of maize that have arisen by random mutations and chromosomal variations from the original wild type. In artificial selection, the new breed or variety that emerges is the one with random mutations attractive to humans, while in artificial selection, the new breed or variety that emerges is the one with random mutations attractive to humans, while in natural selection, the surviving species is the one with random mutations useful to it in its non-human environment. In both natural and artificial selection, the variations are a result of random mutations and the underlying genetic processes are essentially the same. Darwin carefully observed the outcomes of natural selection in animals and plants to form many of his arguments in support of natural selection. Much of his book of the origin of species was based on these observations of the many varieties of domestic pigeons arising from artificial selection. Darwin proposed that if humans could achieve dramatic changes in domestic animals in short periods, then natural selection, given millions of years, could produce the differences seen in living things today. We now come to the end of the spoken article, Introduction to Evolution, Part 3. The next and final part Part 4 contains sections 6 to 8, which deal with co-evolution, species, and mechanism.